everyone, it is Ian. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be some doing something like a like a birthday haul. Uh, I had a birthday somewhat recently, but uh, I held off on filming this video because I had a couple of things coming in the mail for myself, and I wanted to make sure that all of that stuff was included in my birthday video. So let's just get into it. So the first things I wanted to show are some clothes. These are only kind of birthday presents. So a little bit after my birthday, I went to a Goodwill and there I bought like this velvet tank top, which still needs to be washed. So I don't have that with me, but I did already wash this pair of men's khakis. Uh, they were in the ladies section, so I wasn't really sure but i just held them up and they looked like the right size because of everything going on with covid like they're not letting people try stuff on in the dressing rooms at goodwill so i got very lucky and these are like pleated front and they kind of have like a vintage type of feel to them kind of like 90s inspired so that was a really good find and of course i paid less than five dollars for it so that was really cool uh some other clothes that i got um, were for my grandma and these like I said they're really not birthday presents because she was going to give these to me anyway these are clothes of hers that she was cleaning out of her closet and she wanted to make sure I had first dibs in case I wanted any of them so um, I'm not going to show you everything she gave me because she gave me a ton of stuff a lot of it is stuff I've already worn uh, so I have taken the tags off of them, but like some of this stuff like was new with tags on it when she gave it to me. She had never worn them before. She kind of has a bad habit of buying things with no plans to really wear them anywhere. Um, but I guess her loss is my gain because she gave them to me. So we have this button up shirt, which is quite cute. It's got like pink and red stripes on it. And it's from a brand called Cabin Creek. A lot of these brands are probably gonna be brands that you and I haven't really heard of before because they're like older lady brands, but they're probably very high quality because my grandma is a very discerning woman. So um, that's that. I've worn this several times already like to work and I think I've worn this on camera for a video already before too. I really liked it. Next is this button up shirt. And I like this. It's got like really good fall colors to it. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's got like these little like square buttons. That's quite cute. The thing is, it's like really lucky right now that like grandma-ish fashion and oversized clothes are in style right now because me and my girl don't wear the same size, but I have very broad shoulders. So it helps me fill out some of these clothes a little bit better. But with these button up shirts, I just wear them open and I feel like you really can't tell that they're kind of a little big on me. Next is this beautiful white shirt. And <laughs> this is so sweet. It's got like embroidered flowers on it and like little sequins. I just think that this is really cute. This is really cool. This is something that like I would never pick out for myself, but I just think is really unique and kind of different. It's like this blouse jacket. I don't know. I kind of wear it like a jacket and it's got like palm trees on it. Um, I think that it's supposed to be like kind of Spanish looking. Well, or maybe California because it's got, it says like Santa Barbara, Los Angeles. We say Los Angeles here, uh, Laguna Beach. So I don't know, but I think it's really cool and it's petite. I'm not petite. I'm quite tall, um, but it kind of comes like kind of like with a cropped look on me, which again is very handy that it's in style right now. So <laughs> the issues with fit don't really apply very much in this current era of fashion. So that's a good thing. Next is another button up shirt this is a really cute plaid and it's kind of it's very summery and bright and springy and i love it for that and then lastly is this like chambray shirt with embroidery i haven't had the chance to wear this yet but i just think that's really cute that is it for like the button up shirts but there are a couple of other things that i wanted to show you that my grandma gave me and i kind of grab it so this is just this really radical 
zebra print blazer and this is brand new i don't know if you can see but it's still got the tags on it like i said my grandma buys clothes with nowhere to go i really like this this is super cool it's very 80s feeling to me um, it's got like these little cuffed sleeves there it comes down just a little bit past my elbows and i really love this and i can't wait until it gets a little cooler so i can wear it and which is something i never say i hate cold weather but when it gets a little cooler i'll be busting this out and i think i'll be turning heads because this is kind of a statement piece i think and then the last like article of clothing i'll show you that my grandma gave me is this jacket which this is um i don't know it probably comes down a little bit past my my booty and it's got this really pretty um check pattern on it and again i would probably cuff it because the sleeves are too short for me because it's petite but if i cuff it you can't tell and I just think this is really, this is beautiful. And this is definitely something that I'll have to wait until it gets a little bit cooler to wear. She also gave me, I think maybe five or six pairs of shoes, but I'm not gonna show them all. I just picked out three of them to kind of give you an idea of the types of shoes that my grandma buys and then doesn't wear. First of all, I got these kind of like Jennifer Aniston in Friends-esque little ankle booties. And these are quite cute and again very in style right now this is not really my personal style but um, I took them anyway because they're very high quality they're from Clark's which is again kind of an old lady brand but I've worn Clark shoes before and I never complain about them being uncomfortable so I will probably be getting a lot of good use out of these when fall comes around my grandma also got these little I don't know what you call these but they're from a brand called indigo road uh, they're kind of like bikery looking to me i don't know they got like rivets on them um they've got like an open back and i just think these are so like cool these definitely are my style and i don't really know what my grandma was planning to do with these shoes again these are shoes she bought for herself but just i guess didn't have the opportunity to wear so she passed them on to me lastly i've got these sandals i've worn these a couple of times already you can see i got mud on the bottom of them um but these are super in style right now too they're just like little red sandals and not much to explain there but i've worn these several times already and i'll wear them several more i think these are really cute and i'm glad my grandma gave them to me and i'm sorry that she never got the chance to wear them but that's all the stuff that my grandma gave to me. And the rest of what I'm going to be covering in this video is stuff that I kind of bought for myself for my birthday. So one thing that I really was looking forward to getting to myself this year for my birthday was some new makeup. I'm not by any means like a makeup guru or a big makeup lover. Really, I've gone most of my adult life without really wearing makeup on a regular basis. When I used to work at a credit union, I probably wore makeup like one out of every 10 days of work. I just didn't really want to make the time for it in the morning. And I worked, this is going to sound stupid, but I worked with all women. And so I feel like the scrutiny is kind of lowered when you're working around only women. Like if you look busted, everybody else kind of understands why. Um, so I didn't really care to wear makeup all that much. But now I'm kind of getting into it a little bit more for just like the fun and the artistry of it. And part of that is because I've been branching out from certain like beauty gurus on YouTube and found some new people whose looks really inspired me and I thought were really cool and creative. And it's like I felt like I learned how to do makeup when I was like in high school, like, you know, learned how to like properly like contour your eyeshadow and like you know use darker colors in the crease that kind of stuff I learned to do in high school and so I feel like I kind of had somewhat of a mastery of that and I like felt like okay well I don't really need to watch beauty youtubers anymore I learned everything I need to know and then you know when contouring of the face became popular I learned how to do that not that I ever did it but it was just like oh that's a tool in my arsenal if I ever want to like snatch my face I have the know-how but as time went on, I was like, okay, I don't really watch YouTubers for like beauty stuff anymore because it's just irrelevant to me. But I've gotten more into like the people who wear more edgy looks now. Maybe not edgy, but just like colorful, bright, different, not like everyday wear. And that's something I want to try and incorporate more into my everyday life. 
Um, so wearing more bright colors on a regular basis. And I feel like these YouTube channels have actually taught me something new, which I didn't know I needed. And that is how to wear more out there colors. And I feel like I am incorporating that into my regular everyday makeup and it's made a big difference to me and I'm having fun with it again. I haven't had fun with makeup in a long time. So on that note, I picked out a couple of eyeshadow palettes that really kind of, I guess spoke to me, but also were just like kind of talked about and kind of positively by some of the beauty YouTubers that I've been watching recently. And so let me show you those. This is the Muse Beauty Impressionism palette. And um, I think the packaging is quite nice. It has a mirror in it. Let me crack it open for you. And these are the colors inside. So as you can see, a lot of bright, colorful colors. And I really like how they're kind of divided up into warm colors and cool colors. Um, some of my favorite shades that I've used so far are this one and this one, these two pinks. And I like to use greens and blues on my lower lash line. So I've been using those quite a bit as well. I don't really like this shade, this light green one, I just don't, I'm not very good with makeup, so if I have to like really work at it, it gets frustrating to me. So I don't really like that one very much. And I also don't really care for these browns up here very much. Um, they kind of take a while to build up, but every other color on here is amazing. So that's my review, I guess, of this. Don't take any of my advice, but this is a really cool palette. The other palette that I got myself for my birthday is this, alpha palette from a brand called Odensei and I think that they're Swedish it's a Swedish brand and um just look at how pretty that is like when I got this in the mail I was stunned it because the reviews I saw online were like oh the packaging's great but I was like whatever I don't really care that much about packaging but this is really pretty packaging and I don't know, it kind of does make a bit of a difference because it makes you feel kind of special when you're using it. So, and then even the, this part of it is like textured. I don't know, it just feels kind of expensive and fancy. And then the inside, this is more muted and I've been using this palette, so it's not like super crispy clean anymore, but these are the colors in here. And I really like these colors for more like subdued looks because it's got a lot of like neutrally pinky purpley colors, which I think that these warm colors really bring out the nice blues and greens in my eyes. So I really enjoy these colors for that reason. And the only issue is that all of like the shimmery shades are all, I think, pressed glitters, which I'm not very good with, and I always wind up getting glitter all over my face no matter what I do, which I guess at that point I'm trying to make it look intentional, so I'm just like, oh, it's a glittery look kind of day. So it kind of counteracts like the, oh, I'm wearing a subdued look on my eye, but I've got glitter all over my face, but whatever, there's a learning curve and I'm gonna get there someday. I really love these shades and I think it's a very beautiful palette. Again, I'm not a makeup lover, I'm not that into makeup, so please don't, don't expect that on my channel ever. That's not what I'm about, but it's just something that I think is fun. I don't think you need to wear makeup. I don't think you even should wear makeup. I think that sometimes makeup is more oppressive than it is freeing and, um, you know, it, it doesn't really feel that empowering to wear it, but sometimes it's just nice and I try not to think too hard about the, you know, powers that be that are making me feel bad when I don't wear it, that kind of stuff. But let's move on to a couple of other things. This is just stuff I picked up from like Ulta's website. Um, I got these eyeliners. This blue one looks really good and your, the waterline it stays really well. This purple one is kind of garbo. It doesn't work very well in my opinion, in the waterline especially. And this white is kind of like on trial right now and I'll, I don't know how well it works, but this blue one's pretty good. I got these from NYX, these butter glosses, and I got these because they were cheap. Okay, these were like less than $4 each when I got them. So I picked out a peachy shade, uh, like very fuchsia-y type of bright pink shade and then the brown shade, um, and I like them. I wish they were a little glossier and stayed glossier, 
Um, I kind of like that wet look on the lips right now, but they're still pretty nice. And then lastly, in the makeup category, we have um, this little gift set. I bought this in person at Ulta because I was near one and I just needed some mascara. So I ran in and I wanted to try this Bad Gal Bang mascara because I had heard really good things about it. And I don't have the best eyelashes, so I was looking for some help in that category. Again, I don't need it, you know, but I just figured if there's a product that will help, I might as well get it. So this is that mascara. But when I was at the Ulta, the very helpful ladies managed to convince me to purchase this, this gift set. And it's got the Bad Gal Bang mascara. It's got this roller lash mascara. It's got the roller eyeliner, which is like a felt tip. And then it's got this um, Bad Gal Bang eye pencil. And I've been using this a lot actually, and I quite like it. Um, I don't really wear a lot of winged eyeliner anymore because the way my eyelid creases work, it kind of makes it very impossible for my wings to ever be even really. And furthermore, like, I'll draw the wing up, but then the crease is there. So it's like when my eyes open, it looks okay. But when my eyes close, you can see there's like a little like jitter in the line that I tried to draw. Anyway, I don't really wear winged eyeliner very much, but I liked this, that this set was, a, it was a good value. I didn't really need all of it or want all of it, but now I have it and I guess that's cool. But that's all of the makeup products that I got for myself for my birthday. Uh, next up, we'll cover something that's a little bit, it's not embarrassing per se, but I'm, you know, in my mid twenties, getting closer to my late twenties all the time. And, uh, I went to Claire's. The reason was I was going to an event and I know in the COVID-19 era, the coronavirus era, it's not good to be going to events, but it was a family member's wedding. And so... I kind of felt like I had to, but the, the ceremony was outside and it was a very small event with just family there. So it wasn't the safest, but it wasn't the most dangerous thing ever either. And my husband conducted the ceremony, so I kind of really didn't have any choice but to go. Um, and it was a nice time, so I'm not really complaining. I'm just saying, I understand we need to stay socially distant and try to avoid large groups as much as possible. But anyway, I was going to this wedding and I realized that I didn't have any jewelry that matched. I had like gold jewelry and silver jewelry, but nothing that all went together. I needed earrings really. So I went to Claire's because I was like, oh, I can get cheap earrings at Claire's. Let me tell you, Claire's is more expensive than it used to be, like buy a lot. And so in my opinion, it's like, it should be like dollar store type prices because it's like dollar store type products, but whatever. I wound up getting just these like, silver hoop earrings, which I never wear hoop earrings, but I don't know. I was feeling funky, I guess. So I picked these up and I wound up getting also these like ear cuffs to match. And this is just something that you slip over this. I only have like three ear piercings. I have two on this side and one on this side. Um, and while I think it's cool to have other piercings like up and down your ears and in your nose or whatever, it's just not really something that I can commit to. So it's fun to have stuff like this so that you can have more jewelry up on your cartilage, but not average, you, know, you don't have to commit to getting a piercing there. I also picked up these cute little bumblebee earrings. I've been seeing like bumblebee themed stuff online quite a bit recently. I hope that focused for you. But um, these little earrings I thought were quite cute and so I picked these up and these were $6. I feel like that's expensive for little enamel earrings. Don't you think? Like I would think maybe $3 would be appropriate for this, not six, I don't know. And then I got some chokers. I don't know why I bought the chokers really. I look good in them. This is one of the ones I bought, it's like just a little thin, simple, dainty chain. I've been wearing this a lot, actually, like almost every day. And like the little chains are like tiny hearts, which you probably can't see really very well, but there they are. 
And then I also got, well, it was a set. It was three chokers in a set. It had this lacy choker in it. I don't know if you can see. But it had that one in it. And then it had this like velvet one with these little gold hearts on it. Which this one I'll probably get good use out of once it's cooler. Because I don't like wearing velvety type textures this time of year. Like I'll wait till it gets to be more fallish before I bust this one out and start wearing it. And then finally at Claire's, I bought this set of berets. This was $5. Don't you think that's expensive? Why did I buy this stuff? When at Claire's, I guess. But yeah, this was $5 for this little set of berets. Um, I liked the colors. I'm wearing some right now, these like burgundy ones. So I don't know, there you go. That's what I got at Claire's. So now we're basically at the end of my birthday haul, um, if you wanna call it that. The last thing I'll show you is kind of like the biggest thing. Um, and this was kind of a gift from my husband. We don't normally give each other big gifts for our birthdays, but this year uh, I really wanted to get back into digital art. So he got me this iPad and this Apple Pencil so I could start doing digital art again. Um, I have a touchscreen laptop and like this bamboo pen that's like compatible with it, but it, my laptop doesn't really work very well in tablet mode. And a lot of the free art programs that are available for PC are not very user friendly in my opinion. Like not to discourage you if that's what you have, but just I'm not very smart. So those programs don't work very well for me. Um, but Procreate was something that like I had heard a lot of people using. I had seen videos of people drawing in Procreate like speed paints and it looked very intuitive and user friendly. And it's only $10. So I did get Procreate and you've probably already seen on my channel um, that I've done some digital art videos and that is because I have Procreate now and um, I've been really enjoying it. See, that's what I drew in Procreate. Um, but yeah, I think it's been really great and honestly this iPad has been a lot of fun just for other stuff. I like to read ebooks and it's nice to read them off a bigger screen versus off of my little phone screen. Um, watching YouTube videos on it is better than watching them off of my phone. And I have this little cheap stationary bike that has a little tray that the iPad sits in quite nicely. It almost makes it feel like, oh, I'm riding a Peloton. I'm on this stationary bike with this big old screen. Um, even though my stationary bike was $90 and a Peloton is like $2,500. But anyway, I really have been enjoying this iPad. I don't really like Apple products very much usually. I, not to be like hipstery about it, but yeah, I think Apple is a bad company for a lot of reasons, but when they make a good product, they make a good product. And I think that this iPad Pro is a good product. And I think the Apple Pencil is a good product. And I think that Procreate um, is a really accessible drawing app and I've been having so much fun with it. And I feel so happy to be doing digital art again after having really not done it for like five years. So um, that's it, I guess, for this video. All that to say, you can look forward to more digital art on my channel. I'm gonna continue to do traditional art as well from time to time, but it's probably going to be more 50-50 or maybe even slightly skewed towards digital because it is so easy to take this iPad and draw with it everywhere versus if I'm doing traditional art, I have to like set up a camera and stuff like that. Um, Procreate automatically records a time lapse of your digital art process. So I don't have to like set up a camera to film it. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video and um, I'll see you next time.